everything changes and nothing stands still. Man, like a light in the night, is kindled and put out. Heraclitus of Ephesus was one of the early Greek pre-Socratic philosophers. Like the other pre-Socratic philosophers, he sought to identify the first cause for the creation of the world. He rejected earlier theories, such as air and water, and claimed that fire was the first cause, as it both created and destroyed. Also, he was famous for his insistence on permanent change as being the fundamental essence of the universe. Little is known about his life. As a youth, he was a prodigious intellect, and he claimed to have taught himself everything he knew by a process of self-questioning. Heraclitus is recorded as having written a single book on nature, divided into three discourses, one on the universe, and another on politics, and a third on theology. The book was deposited or stored in the great temple of Artemis in Ephesus. The Dark Philosopher Heraclitus was known to his contemporaries as the Dark Philosopher, so called because his writings were so difficult to understand. When asked about Heraclitus' ideas and philosophy, Socrates said, The part I understand is excellent, and so too is, I dare say, the part I do not understand. But it needs a Delian diver to get to the bottom of it. Heraclitus is well known for his contempt and ridicule of the common understanding of the nature of life and the purpose of human life in his age. In fact, he seems to have despised most of the human beings he came into contact with. Heraclitus compared most people's understanding to that of those asleep. To Heraclitus, only the philosopher, the one who pursued truth, was fully awake and fully alive and he seemed to consider himself the only philosopher of his time. He was also known as the weeping philosopher, and it is speculated that he was prone to melancholia or depression, which prevented him from finishing some of his works. It is generally accepted that he died while attempting to cure himself, as he placed no trust in doctors, nor, it seems, in anyone but himself. The world is governed by the law of change. His central claim is summed up in his phrase, Pantare, everything flows, or everything is in a state of flux, and that one cannot step twice into the same river. Heraclitus recognizes the essential underlying essence of life as a change. Nothing in life is permanent nor can it be, because the very nature of existence is a change. Change is not just a part of life in Heraclitus' view, it's life itself. All things, he claimed, are brought into and pass out of existence through a clash of opposites, which continually create and destroy. He is said to have severely criticized those who lamented strife and war, because both, he claimed, were instrumental in transformation. According to Heraclitus, the world is an, an eternal state of becoming, and all changes arise from the dynamic and cyclic interplay of opposites. Opposites are necessary for life, he believed but they are unified in a system of balanced exchanges, with pairs of opposites making up a unity. Thus, one road carries some travelers out of a city, while it brings others back in. The way up is also the way down. 
earth changes to fire and fire changes to earth, etc. In this, he posits an equal and opposite reaction to every change, a primitive law of conservation. In fact, Heraclitus does make paradoxical statements, but his views are no more self-contradictory than some of the claims of Socrates. God in Heraclitus' philosophy He saw divinity as present in the world, but not as a conventional anthropomorphic being, such as the Greeks worshipped. For Heraclitus, the world itself either is God or is a manifestation of the activity of God, which is somehow to be identified with the underlying order of things. Everything changes, and nothing stands still. You could not step twice into the same river. Change is a pathway up and down, and this determines the birth of the world. Eternity is a child playing, playing checkers. The kingdom belongs to a child. It is harder to fight against pleasure than against anger. War is the father and king of all. Some he has made gods, and some men, some slaves, and some free. The many are mean, only the few are noble. Though wisdom is common, Yet the many live as if they had a wisdom of their own. He who does not expect will not find out the unexpected, for it is trackless and unexplored. Man, like a light in the night, is kindled and put out. This universe, which is the same for all, has not been made by any god or man. But it always has been, is, and will be an ever-living fire, kindling itself by regular measures and going out by regular measures. Much learning does not teach understanding. It is wise to listen, not to me, but to the world, and to confess that all things are one, the road up and the road down is one and the same. God is day and night, winter and summer, war and peace, surfeit and hunger. The waking have one world in common, sleepers have each a private world of his own. Dogs also bark at what they do not know. It would not be better if things happened to people just as they wish. For what sense or understanding have they? They follow ministrels and take the multitude for a teacher, not knowing that many are bad and few good. For the best men choose one thing above all, immortal glory among mortals, but the masses stuff themselves like cattle. Character is destiny. Nature is wont to hide herself. Donkeys prefer garbage to gold. I search it for myself. Opposition brings concord. Out of discord comes the first harmony.